welcome to my father's living room <laughs> and a slightly more academic background than we used to. Uh, but today I thought that we would do something a little bit different, mostly because I destroyed all of my skin on a project recently and I didn't feel like I could climb particularly hard after that. But I thought it would be a really good opportunity to do this. I've been thinking a lot lately about the kinds of techniques and tactics that have really helped me progress as a climber and I thought it would be great to share some of those with you. So today is going to be the first video of that little series and I wanted to focus on how to climb more analytically. When I first started climbing I would often get caught up in this like frenzy trying to send a boulder, throw myself at it again and again with no plan in just in a not very considered way. Uh, I would get tied out incredibly quickly and often not see the kind of success that I wanted to. So today I wanted to talk you through six ways in which I've helped maximize each session, maximize my time on a boulder, that's really difficult for me, plus a bonus tip at the end, <laughs> number seven. Then we're gonna head to the gym with my sister, Sophia. Sophie, welcome back. Hi. Hey. <laughs> and we'll try and apply some of what I, I say in the start of the video to an actual boulder with her, so she's gonna try a new project. Um, and I really hope this helps you. If you are just starting climbing or you've been doing it for a little while and you're looking to really push yourself, then I think this is the video for you and please keep watching. Where do you start? I think it's here. Yes, it's here. So, tip number one. I know this sounds like a really basic thing, but it is so important to read the boulder. I can't tell you how many times I have seen a boulder that I really liked in the gym and I've just run up to it, hopped on the start holds and got halfway up and realized that I don't actually know what I'm doing. So, before you get on, just make sure that you read the entire boulder. Look at every hold, examine every move, assess how you are planning to do things. It's also particularly important to try and figure out what the trickiest part of the climb is going to be. This is also called the crux, as this is the part that's most likely to trip you up, obviously. <laughs> Smelly feet. Smelly. Something that's really helpful is to look at which holds are already chalked up because this is your best clue for the kind of beta that's come before you. And then particularly outdoors, it's really crucial to look at holds which aren't already chalked up because you might be able to use something that no one else has thought to use before and unlock some key sequence that helps you get to the top. <laughs> So tip number two, this is just some basic housekeeping, but sometimes it can mean the difference between sending or just greasing off a boulder. If people use a hold enough and they keep putting chalk on top of it, it sort of compacts and that combined with the sort of natural greasiness of your skin and any humidity in the air can make holds feel really, really terrible. And just giving them a brush and breaking down all of that can completely change the way that they feel. This becomes particularly important when you start encountering trickier holds like slopers or smaller crimps. So this is something which is really important at the start of your session on the boulder and then also in between your attempts to kind of maintain that friction on the holds. And it's also particularly important when you're sharing your boulder with somebody. Nobody else wants to be climbing on your grease, so just make sure you follow that good etiquette. Tip number three. So this may seem like a really obvious thing, uh, but it's a mistake that I made a lot as a beginner and I'm sure other people do as well. Um, trying the boulder from the start move every single time, no matter where the crux is on the problem. I really, I did this a lot. You know, even if the crux was at the top of the climb, I would do all of the moves up until that point, reach the same point at which I fell, fall off and do that again. You don't have to start from the start move every single time. It's really important to break the climb up into manageable chunks and then start creating some links between those. And then only once you feel satisfied with that progress and you're comfortable with all of the moves, then I would go back to the start and try and do some send goes. This really is 
one of the best ways to conserve energy and maximize your time on that boulder, especially when things like skin are a limiting factor and this rarely becomes a problem outdoors when the rock becomes more abrasive. So, I don't know if this is a South African term or not, but we say a climber is jack rustling when they're just throwing themselves at the climb again and again. They're not resting, they're kind of in this, this frenzy. Just absolutely try your best not to do this. I know that it's really easy to just kind of get caught in this intense like psychological spiral when you're trying really hard and you desperately want to send a boulder, but I can't emphasize how important it is to rest between your tries. You just want to get the most out of every single attempt that you have. I often just force myself to lie on the mats or lie on my boulder pad in between goes and just relax all of my muscles and I don't put on a timer or anything but you should have a really good natural sense of when your pump has started to dissipate enough and you're feeling ready and fresh for your next go. This also gives you really important time to gather your thoughts and really consider what you can do differently, which leads me to the next tip. Tip number five. Come on, take a breath. Woo. Ask why you are falling off and what can you do differently? Again, this really comes hand in hand with the jack wrestling. If you just jump on the climb immediately afterwards, you don't give yourself the time you need to consider what went wrong and how you can improve in your next attempt. If I have a climbing partner with me, I often will ask them to film my attempts so I can watch back what I did. And this really helps you see how your body position might be slightly wrong and to correct that in your next go. Sometimes when you see a climb being done one way in front of you, particularly when it's being sent that way, it's easy to get stuck thinking that that's the only way to do it. What your friends are doing and their beta, while it may be working perfectly for them, isn't always right for you. And so it's important not to get caught up in this. So just remember to think out of the box, try think creatively, find something that works for you, Try things that seem silly or outrageous. Think about your own dimensions and your own strengths and figure out the way that's best for you. So tip number seven isn't really a strategy tip. It's more maybe a friendship strategy. It's just nice to watch how much better at climbing you are than me. <laughs> it is really important to climb with people who are better and stronger than you. You really learn so much. I think it's been the, the thing that has contributed to my progress in climbing the most. Instead of one coach, I've had many friends who were sort of informal friend coaches and there to help me figure out why I couldn't do a move or figure out better beta on a boulder. So I really hope you enjoyed those tips. We're gonna head to the gym now with Sophie to try and apply some of this to her project. So we wanted to find Sophie a boulder that she could possibly do in a session, but would still be on the hard side for her, and we settled on this technical slab climb. <laughs> That's a very long breath you got there. <laughs> she doesn't usually try pinks in the gym, uh, which are around 6C or V5. So you still are trying to work out your sequence, right? Yeah. So I think before you get back on the wall, mm -hmm. just make sure you have a plan. Mm -hmm for the entire boulder. And I think this is quite a long one. It so is. it would be quite easy to break it up into clear sections and right. tackle those. So what do you think the crux of the climb is gonna be? What's the hardest bit? All of it. Oh no. <laughs> There's quite a reachy move out right. 
Then you have to get the foot up mm. and lay back, get onto that slopey big pink hold. And then it looks sort of fine. All right, so we have a good plan of action now. Yes. It's all very technical, and now I've seen Katie climb it with great style. <laughs> so I'm going to try and replicate that. Nice. No. Too high. Okay, that was a good first go. I think I should have stayed low and tried to just lean over a bit more. Okay. Getting high was a trap. <laughs> You've now do done the first few moves, mm -hmm. so don't do the first few moves again. Okay. Start from the point at which you had a problem. Mm. Put your left foot up, yeah. Yeah. So I think Sophie's struggling with the move to the undercling because her hips are all the way on the left and so she's reaching out but her arm is it's like too far a distance for her. So she needs to shift her whole body more towards the right and then it'll like close that distance. Then you can just reach. Right? Cool. Hips to the right. Hips to the right. Yes! Come on! Okay, can you you can match the undercling if it helps? Yep. And now you want to get that left hand up. Yes! Nice! Come on! Good Sophie. Really good. Yes, Sophie, come on. I just pull, pull up on that and trust the right foot. Yes. Come on. Yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Remember, slopers are better if you sink below them. Yes. Okay. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Nice progress. I think that sloper needs a really good brush. You're right, it does. Are you gonna brush it for me? I'll brush it for you. Okay. I'll be your brush bitch, anytime. We had the first part of the climb nicely figured out, so it was time for Sophie to focus on the crux, which was moving off the sloper. The easiest way for her to do this was by climbing up the jugs to save energy and set herself up for the move in isolation. Oh dear. Flag, yeah. <laughs> oh no. So we've just been trying to figure out um, what is giving Sophie so much trouble with the sloper. And usually the general rule with slopers is that the further you sit underneath them with your like hips to the wall, the easier they are to hold. But in this case, which is quite unusual, is I found it was only good if I pull up to the right and kind of lock off a bit higher, and then that suddenly brought my hips in close and I could reach the next hold really easily. Yeah, you're really leaning over to the right. Really twisting to the right. Brushing the slope. Yeah, nice. Come on. Come on, just trust it. Okay, get that hip in. Pull up to the right. Yes, Sophie. Come on. It's okay. Take your time. Yes! So good. Come on. Come on. So good. Yeah, nice. 
Well done. You've officially done all the moves. Yeah. And now I think it's time for a rest and then your send goes. That was so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you pleased with yourself? Yes. <laughs> so, so nice to feel like it's possible. <laughs> I'm making Sophie rest because I know she wants to jump straight back on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Desperate to send. I just want to send. No pressure. <laughs> Send go. This is it. <laughs> no pressure. You finally earned Two going. contradictory statements. <laughs> Spot climbing. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. That was so good. You did so well. Oh, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> yes. I'm glad I took my chalk with me. I've been watching so much comp climbing. <laughs> got into the got into the gas time. I was like, oh, Bob. Yes. Yes. I'm going to the top. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. It's it's very rewarding actually to break it down and get strategic because yeah, I would have got so disheartened. Do you think like falling on the first couple of moves, you would have been like, ugh, I can't do this, yeah. and then just walked away? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be like, oh, I can't reach that. Yeah. Instead of like using my body position to get mm -hmm. closer. Good job, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's the end. I'm getting cozy. I really hope you guys enjoyed those few tips and the little projecting so session with Sophie. Um, please comment below if there are any things, techniques, tactics, strategies that have really helped you progress as a climber that I haven't covered. I would really love to hear from you. And I'll see you in the next video. Woo! -woo. <laughs>